Hi everyone, Brightbone here and I'm back with another video and today we're going to take a look at a different version of the Cobalt Strike Beacon that comes through PowerShell. The Cobalt Strike Beacon that we're going to do this time is a stageless beacon. Before we did the staged beacon where it checks in and then downloads the code back to the host, this time we're going to do a stageless beacon. Stageless beacons, they're huge, but they mean that the attacker doesn't have to have that second stage come down so it's less likely that they'll be caught in a lot of cases so we're going to take a look at that so let's start with cobalt strike we will jump over here to our cali box and we have cobalt strike here so to create a cobalt strike stageless beacon we click the gear and then we're going to choose our output of powershell now we can either use 64-bit payload or not it doesn't make much difference here but we're going to use the 64-bit payload and then we're going to choose our listener here and our listener is HTTPS. So we'll choose that and we're going to choose generate and then this will just save the beacon to the root of our user which is RDP user here. We'll just save that as beacon PS1 and we have now saved that. So if we come over here and we take a look at this beacon we cat out uh, beacon.ps1, <clears throat> we're going to see that this thing is enormous in comparison to our previous beacon. It is huge, page upon page upon page of base64. And that's because it's the entire executable file all in one giant package of base64. It's not a stager. It doesn't download a stager and then reach back out. It's the whole thing. Now, it does look basically the same. There are good ways you can detect this just the same, but uh, we're going to use this to do our detection this time at the beginning of the beacon versus using the BXOR. Even though the BXOR is still there, at the bottom here, you'll see the BXOR. But what tends to happen with this one is that you'll get the alert on the last log if you do the BXOR instead of the first log. And we want to get our alert on the first log because it makes it a lot easier to work forwards than backwards from the sim. So we'll trigger on that. But typical Cobalt Strike beacon here and what they look like when they're stageless. So I'll clear my screen here. And we're going to jump over to our Windows 10 host now. Our Windows 10 host, we've got Clint Barton here and we've got just a regular command shell. Clint is a regular user. So we're going to try to bypass AMZ and get this beacon installed. So first thing we want to do is just pop open PowerShell. Since we know we're going to be bringing this in with PowerShell. And we'll CLS here. And we're going to do an AMZ bypass here in a minute. Once we try our download cradle. I'm very certain this download cradle is going to fail. And it's going to get eaten by AMZ. But we will try it anyway. So here we go. We've got ix, new object, netweb client, and the download string of the URL that we want to use. And this is going to download it and put it straight into memory. It will not be on disk. So it not being on disk means it's less likely to be detected in the long term. But in this case, I'm sure this is going to fail. If I gave it the right port. Oh, I didn't start my server. I apologize. So we got to come back over here and we're going to do Python dash m http dot server on port 8000 that's going to start our server and then it'll say unable to connect we'll try it again now and also that is not the right ip there we go 192.168.136.37 port 8000 on beacon ps1 and now we see this script contains malicious content and has been blocked by your antivirus software. That means AMZ got us. And anti-malware systems interface, the hook into Defender. Uh, we're going to go ahead and defeat that. But AMZ is, when you're using PowerShell, it's basically the hook into anything that the AV is going to do, the first hook. So it allows things to be scanned. But without AMZ or when you can bypass AMZ, in a lot of cases, you can get completely by any AV. In this case, we can definitely get by Windows Defender. So we'll go over here to AMZ.fail, and I've shown this before. 
but we're just going to generate a payload and we'll generate one that you know looks like it's going to work typically these rasta mouse ones work and just don't pull the top make sure you get down to here and we're going to try this and sometimes this requires a few attempts so we'll go ahead and try it and luckily it worked first shot that time that's the first time that's happened in a bit so we'll clear screen now and we should be able to do our download cradle again and I will make sure I paste it in there with the right URL this time. And we'll get our download cradle. And there we go. And now it seems to have worked because it locked up. Oh, Defender ate it. Sometimes this happens now. But we'll just try it again. This has happened to me a couple times, but I've been able to get the beacon in there successfully after a little bit. Let's get another one of these going. Back to Win 10 host 2. Clear our screen. Do our bypass. There's our bypass. Then we'll do our beacon once again. See if it gets us this time. Mm, not looking like it got us that time. And we see the download and we have a beacon. So we have our beacon. <coughs> so we know for a fact this is working now. Uh, if I go over to interact, I can give it something just to see if it will come back. I'll just do who am I? Uh, well, actually, just PS. And in a second, we should get the list processes back because this one still seems to be running. And it is because it didn't kill off PowerShell. So we'll jump over here to Cali. And in a minute, it'll process. Regardless, the whole point was just to illustrate how to get by Hamzy and get a beacon to work. And it is working. It's just taking a minute, a little period of time. Defender may be messing with it a bit. And there comes our process list. But Defender may be messing with it a little bit here. So let's jump over to our Elastic Sim. And we'll detect this now. So to detect this, it's much like the other Cobalt Strike Beacon. We're going to start looking at event code 4104. And this is PowerShell script block logging. So if we do PowerShell script block logging, we have every script that's run on that system. And having those scripts means that we can do things with them. We can reverse engineer them. So we can see event ID 4104 here. And we'll scroll through these because we may have a few. That does not look like it. This one does. Nope, not it either. Oh yeah, here we go. See all this text? This is our Cobalt Strike Beacon and look how long it is. It just goes and goes and goes and goes. And then if we go to the next log, it'll be the same thing because they're continuations. See, and there's our BXOR35. So we split this into multiple logs. If we go over here and we look on our Win10 host now, and we go to the Event Viewer, go to Event Viewer, We'll take a look at what these logs actually look like. So if you go to Applications and Services Logs, we'll then go to PowerShell and Operational, and it'll show us the number of logs that's created. This is bigger and smaller depending on the beacon size and what you've uh, configured, but sometimes this can be four or five logs that we're going to have to piece together to make this work. So we'll give it a second here. It's still loading. There we go. And then we're going to choose Microsoft, Windows. And then we'll scroll down here to PowerShell Operational. So where are you? PowerShell and Operational. And on this host, our most recent 4104 should be our code execution from the beacon. So we see that. 
And then there we go. This is our script block text beginning. Or no, this one. This one is. And see, it says 21 of 21. That is 21 different log files that we have to piece together to do this reversal. Now I'll pause the video when we get to that point and I'll just come back in with our CyberShift reversal to show you. But what we have to do is take all of these code blocks of base64 and piece them together in exact order. This is our last log because we know it has the XOR in it. But as we scroll through here, we're gonna have 21 different logs that are just continuation of that PowerShell. And that's this is indicative of a stageless beacon. You'll never have everything in the first log. And if you don't get all of them, you cannot do this reversal. You need all of those logs together. Because what we're going to do with CyberChef is we're going to bring this in here and we're going to take an executable out of CyberChef and then we're going to run it through 1789.py, uh, which is a Didier Stevens tool. So we will go ahead and look at the rule creation. There's our beacon. And then this is our first law. So we'll go ahead and we will look at our rule creation over here in Elastic Sim. So I created a rule here to fire on the beginning of that log, the bytecode. So we can see this fired twice. And if we pop this open, we should be able to go to data view. Uh, <clears throat> we'll do it a different way. Let's see, we'll pop open and where are you? Host 10, not what I wanted. Pop this open. Table, that's what I want. And then we're gonna go through until we hit message. Field. And we can see here is our query event code 4104 and message byte and var code and system convert and from base 64 string. So what we're looking for is the word byte, var code and system convert and from base 64 string within the PowerShell script block. So if I come back over here and I take a look at my Kibana, let's go back just to the discover pane, and then we'll paste in our rule here. And you can see we're only going to grab the first log of each of these. So we'll add to that. And notice, I've done this a few times, but we can see we are matching on the beginning of this log one of 21, not the BXOR, which would la match on 21 of 21, and we'd have to work our way backwards. Right. So we want our timeline to start when we see the first log come in. It looks like this. So notice here our timeline starts at 1643. So I can work forwards in time, 1644 or 1645, however long it takes uh, for that beacon to come through. And we can see uh, all of those different pieces and piece them back together. But as we'll notice, when you look at this message, we'll go through it. There's a ton of PowerShell here, and then it just kind of stops. But this one of 21 lets you know that there is that many logs, one of 21. All right. So to piece our CyberChef reversal together, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video because it's going to take me a minute to get all of these uh, pieces of Base64 into CyberChef, and I don't want you to watch me cut and paste for the next five minutes. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and then we'll bring it back when we get to the actual reversal. All right, we're back. So I took the liberty of pasting together all the different logs, 1 through 21, and I just took the base 64. Since I already have to do operations on the action, there's no reason for me to get the entire log of everything and stuff it in here and do regex. So I just took out the base 64, and I put it in one file. So I pre-configured my recipe here as well. My recipe is going to be from base 64 and then XOR of 35. So we're going to do an XOR of 35 with decimal and then from base 64. Now, the reason I pre-configured the recipe here 
is if I paste this in, it's so big, sometimes it will actually crash my browser session. Also, if you have AV turned on and you're messing with this, you're going to get got because this is a clean Base64 copy of a Cobalt Strike Beacon. So just be aware that when you're working with it that you are working with live fire. So if I paste this in now, we can immediately see some information that looks familiar. This program cannot be run in DOS mode. And notice this is an interesting part. In most files, in the PE cough uh, set of file uh, information, right? What Windows uses for files is PE cough. That's the standard, right? Windows PE. They almost always have the magic byte, MZ. But notice the Cobalt Strike Beacon has MZAR. That is a telltale sign it is a Cobalt Strike Beacon. Now what this does is this actually breaks my ability to use the file extraction piece of CyberChef. Like if I go over here and I go file or I pull out file extract, it will say no files found because the magic byte is broken. But we're smarter than that. We can download this. You just come over here and say choose save output to file, name it csbeacon.exe, and we'll just save that off, right? We'll save that down to our downloads folder. Now, once you've done that and you have a clean copy of this file, you can now use a tool called 1768.py from Didier Stevens to do the analysis of it. Because it's the full executable, this is my recommended method. You don't want to try to pick this apart and dig through it and find the IPs here in CyberChef. It's just too unwieldy. It's too big. So let's hop over to our when we'll go over to our Hunter workstation, which is my analysis workstation. And I've already uploaded a copy of the CS Beacon that I downloaded from CyberChef. And we can see here we are in Didier's Steven Suite in Bash. You can run this on Linux. Uh, if you're going to run it on Windows, run it in WSL. So we will go 1768.py. At least I think that's it. Maybe it's 1867. I cannot remember to save my life. 1768.py. So Python 3, 1768.py. The beacon is in the folder above this, so I gave it a dot dot slash. And then here's csbeacon.exe. So we'll go ahead and we'll run this tool. And it's going to do its analysis, and it's going to say guessing Cobalt Strike version 4.4. And this is the 64-bit one. See? So if we scroll up, we can also see the URL that it's using for the, for the post. We can see it's a post. We can see it runs SysFile 64 run DLL 32 and SysNative run DLL 32.exe, as well as here is our URL 192.168.136.37. So we would now go put this in our firewalls and stop this beacon from executing. So that it would no longer be able to communicate back to the beacon host. So that's it. We've done our reversal Cobalt Strike Beacon. Once again, thank you, everybody. Thanks for liking and subscribe, subscribing. I've got a whole bunch of new subscribers. Uh, Want to get those watch hours up. Uh, also, if you, uh, if you like the videos, it really helps us as we uh, try to expand this channel. So I'll leave you with Hack the Planet and Defend Better. Thanks, everyone.